I think I just got a little dizzy just now. <laughs> a little chair dancing. Happy Monday. Welcome to House East Presents. Woo! It's a lovely audience out there today. Oh, hi, Jamie. Hi. We have Jamie Hossack here today, Miss uh, Scottish Loss. Scottish Loss. How are you today? I'm feeling great. You're feeling good. We're yeah. knocking knees under the table because she's a tall girl. She's a dancer. Mm-hmm. So we have her on here to talk choreography and life and all things Vegas and whatnot. And you know a lot of the people in the audience out here, do you? Hi, guys. You know Keely very well over here. What's up, we Keely? We go way back. Give a shout out to Keely. Hi. <laughs> you can talk. It's okay. You can yell back to us. Do you have? You also have cocktails in your hand. Keely's done my makeup forever. Forever. And ever and ever. She's awesome. Ever ever. And we have Andy out here too. Yep, I know that and guy. And we also have our friend Tanya out here. Tanya is embarked on her Good Spirits tour. She's been a guest on here a couple of times. Hi. Uh, Where's your alcohol? Did you need some? No, I'm fine. You're fine. Okay. Well, it is Monday. <laughs> Kids did go back to school. Everyone should have alcohol today. If you have children going back, um, and alcohol to celebrate that moment. <laughs> so cheers. Cheers. For the children. Back to school. Uh-huh. Mm. I don't know if I should be taking a shot for children, but yeah. Nap time? That's okay. That's all right. That's okay. Nap time. Um, so we usually start the show with a little bit of weekend roundup, things we did this weekend. I found myself, uh, we had a nice offer on house seats. I found myself at a Mandalay Beach Ooh. At a 98 Degrees yes! O-Town concert. And uh, what else? Uh, Dreams. The girl band okay. Dreams. Okay. Which I wasn't aware that I knew their music, but until they sang, you know, then uh, then I started to uh, sing along. It'll but it was very entertaining being in the beach concert with, uh, you know, they encouraged young people, but I, there wasn't a lot of young people unless they were dragged by their mom because this is 30 plus, you know, people. 30-year-old plus women loving um, these bands. And <laughs> I, I never really was an O-Town fan making the band. I was 98 band. Degrees for sure. See, 90, see, I didn't know a lot of their songs, and it was weird because they started doing a lot of uh, covers of other boy bands. So, oh. And I already have a hard time differentiating the Which Backstreet one? Boys yep. and NSYNC yep. and other boys. I don't know. Yeah. No, weird. I do too. Yeah. So. I think half of them have been in Chippendales too. Yes. So yeah, Nick Lachey or Drew Lachey or what? They were there. Yep. They were. They were. Um, they were pulling something out of their ass at the show. Uh, but but uh, yeah, I mean these these women were screaming like literally like back back in the day screaming, and they're there in their bathing suits, throwing themselves as much as they could towards them on stage. It was just like, I what am I venue. doing here? I that venue is amazing. Venue. And and you know I I was reminded and I missed it I was reminded the night before my one of my favorite bands was there the Go Go's were there the night before Belinda Carlisle yeah oh, yep. very cool one of my favorite people so and that was like their farewell tour I guess and then so they're you got to see. they're done <laughs> and then yes and I got to see the next day which was which was quite oh Scott keeps reminding me to talk about this because I don't want to talk about this because it breaks my heart but uh, today we learned that Gene Wilder passed and. Uh, I was on the way to the show, and I was playing Pure Imagination, my absolute favorite song ever written, in the car on the way here. I was just crying <laughs> on my way here. And so I've had enough to drink. Now I won't cry for the, for the show. But then he's going to see. Now he's going to put his voice on, ladies and gentlemen. Chocolate room. The Did best. you ever want to jump in that the chocolate best. room? I was scared of the bubbles. Yeah. I was terrified when I was little. Now I you, love it. You know what? My mom, we were talking about this at the beginning of the show. We were talking about... Uh, the movie versus Johnny Depp, the the book. Because when I was a kid, my mom read that book to us when we were kids, me and my sister. Okay. She would sit in the hallway of me and my sister's rooms and read to us every night. So she read James and the Giant Peach, and she read um, uh, Charlie the Chocolate Factory as as a book to us when we were younger. So I, w- I was already excited about, you know, the movie had already come out, but I was already excited about the book and excited about the story. So I'm, I don't even believe Johnny Depp's a version of it, but... yeah. But uh, the music from the show, which was nominated, we looked it up. It was nominated for an Oscar, but didn't actually win the Oscar for best score. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. But the the writers also wrote a lot of music for Sammy Davis Jr. Okay. And uh, and so you know, it's just it's probably one of the best musicals ever because of the message that it says. You know, if you want to change the world, which we talk about quite often on the show, there's nothing to it. I'm just glad I got to grow up with that movie yeah. as well. And like, of course, all the candy. It's very fast. Oh, my gosh. We had a party <laughs> one day at, at DW. We had a Willy Wonka party at DW. We had like the chocolate fountain. And I was going around pouring candy down people's mouth. 
Of course. It was great. It was awesome. And people relive it all the time for corporate events. I see it so, all yeah, the time. I've yeah. actually been a chocolate girl in a bathtub full of chocolate. I mean, you name it. We've done it. Do we have a fo- do we have photos of that? We don't. Those <laughs> Dang are- <laughs> it. Of all the photos that Jamie sent, there was not I'm, in a chocolate bathtub. I tried to keep it, you know. You keep it. We're not have to be back G-rated to here. Back to school. But we do another shot. As we say. <laughs> Every time you say back to school, you have to do a shot. Mm-hmm. For the children. For the- um. So what you did send over, I want to, I want to, oh, really quick. She did have a Willy Wonka story. Oh, yeah. I want to hear this again. Tell Um, everybody about your Willy Wonka story about what happened. Speaking of Manly Bay, uh, the day of my wedding, pretty cool. It was very chill. My dad flew in, uh, picking up everybody from the airport. And so he had to drop me off. He got me a room. (laughs) My girlfriends were going to meet me around noon, which is normal Vegas get up time. Right. (laughs) So 9 a.m., what do I do? My dad left, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll play Willy Wonka Penny Slots. And, uh, you know, the little bonus, they say they unwrap the gold candy bar. Yeah. It's never going to happen. You think it's a lie? It happened. One five grand day of my wedding. It was the biggest sign ever, and I was like, dinner's on me. See? Those are the kind of cool. moments. You know, I've played that machine to no luck, but that is amazing. But I was betting the max because I was like, yeah. I really need to go shopping. Fredericks was upstairs. And that's, I think, what did it. So there's your secret. Max bet. is Scott, is that an IGT game? I think it is. See, his wife works for IGT. Oh, okay. It's oh, not. Well, I, in other news this week at the same time, on that, that note, I play Megabucks a lot when I'm out with my partner. We, he plays the Buffalo game, okay. and I play Megabucks, okay. and I played at the win, so very often. And this woman won I at heard. the win. Yes, this week, she won $10.7 million. I'm like, I play yeah. that game all the time. Every night. <laughs> I'm like, what? Every night, yeah. I have won $900 on that game playing at the Venetian, but nowhere That's near so five cool. grand. So golden ticket for Jamie. It was a golden day. Golden. It's a golden <laughs> day. It was shocking. On your wedding day. So we are flashing. Fo- that is not her photo. But that right. would be Andrew Ragone's photo, which is fine, right. too. Oh, He's hot. There's uh, Jamie. <laughs> but I, I've done so much of your life. I was like, is you that You probably when, have choreographed much of Andrew's <laughs> things. So you sent over, these are very clear, amazing shots. Yeah. First of all, I'm going to give homage to your photographer, first of all, because which the shots. Which is my husband. Which is your husband? Yeah. He's a B-boy super crew and does what this a, on the side. Like a dynamic pair, like powerhouse pair. It was freezing that day. No pants. Well, yeah, no pants. This Lake Tahoe <laughs> somewhere or Mount Charleston? Mount Charleston, okay. just running in the middle of the street. No wow. cars, go. <laughs> you look like kind of an Olympic gymnast fun. in that picture, too, actually. Yeah, and shout out to Jeffrey DeBarthy. He made me that jacket. Oh, she gets her clothes made and her husband does her photos. <laughs> We're going to talk about the small business of Jamie here because right? honestly, this is serious. This was our like honeymoon. Your... So That's your honeymoon? Whenever we like hang out, it's always a moment. <laughs> Quick, grab the camera. I mean, it's funny. I'm liking yeah. this. We, why That's didn't we, we talk about this before, Keely? This is great. This Her husband? Do you know her husband? <laughs> okay. Hmm. 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 We'll, We're going we'll to have your husband to on to talk about this too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In your in your world, and so one of the things. Oh, this is awesome! I, you, she sent so many amazing shots of the landscape of our valley as well. Yeah, this was very cool during the blooming season. We went down there. And- are you where are you from originally? Have you lived here a long time? Because you very very well um, adapted to our environment here. So. I'm from Phoenix. Okay, so right. there you go, there Phoenix, you go. Arizona. I she did suffered live through heat in the East Coast okay. uh, for three years. But you're originally from Phoenix. Originally from okay. Phoenix. Moved here. Uh, went to U of A for a hot second, okay. and then auditioned here and been here ever since. So. And what did you? When did you audi- What did you audition for? When did you come here? You're gonna laugh. The MGM no. theme park. I remember that. The last year, did I just? Yeah, I was I was not old enough to be here. <laughs> and by old enough, you mean like fifteen? I mean, when 16. I turned twenty-one, they yeah. were like, "Haven't you been in Studio Fifty Four? Uh huh. Uh huh. That's how we do sure. it here. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those days. I think your school ID got you in. Yes, and that didn't even have your birthday on it. Yep. Yeah. Tennille Whitlock. Mm-hmm. That was me. <laughs> I was David Thomas from Newark, New Jersey. Well, they would. They would. Do ask, I look like I'm from Newark, New Jersey? No. no. But they would ask me, "How about the captain?" And it was clueless, so and you're like, I uh-huh. failed. They're like, "Bye." Wow, you got. You actually got dismissed. A couple. But of they them. didn't take it away. See, no. that's the funny thing. They have every right to take it away, but they don't take it away. Yeah. I'm like, you. You had an opportunity. I remember them flashing the light in the bar, and you know how it's supposed to light up. It went dull, like literally. <laughs> I was in a bar, and they're like, they looked at me, and they just handed it back and said, "Whatever." And I was like, "Okay, thank you." 
But yeah, back in the day, if you're cute, you're like, hey, you guys like, got hey. in. Yeah. They're, they're a little stricter now, and thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank you for all of those who check IDs. Everybody at my restaurant, and everywhere else, thank you for checking IDs and keeping us real. Right. So okay, so theme park. So what 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 did you audition for at the theme park? So I came down here, and they brought me. Um, I wasn't old enough for Studio Fifty Four yet, yeah. but they brought me down in MGM where the EFX Theater was, yep. and I auditioned yep. for. The theme park slash EFX slash New Year's, and that's where it all began. And gotcha. I was so fortunate um, for Barry Morgan, Chris Coley. That's uh-huh. where it all started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you so, know, Jenny Ammon, is that? Oh, yeah. I went to junior high, middle school, <laughs> wait, whatever they call it, uh, elementary school. I went with elementary school with Jenny. She was. I've known her a long, long time. And she was dancer in Studio 54 when I used to go all the time, swinging from the And she the would work rafters. in the theme park during the day. Okay. And she would sleep under the table. So I didn't get to know her at that part because I was like, why is this girl sleeping? She's tired all the time. <laughs> but then I started working at Studio 54 and we became best. I mean, to this day, we work together. So. That was one of the best clubs in Vegas. Oh, my gosh. I'm very fortunate. We, I mean, we had one of those little, well, like, I think it was a, was it a blue card or silver card for the VIP? Oh, totally. And Lisa Pittman was the upstairs yes, DJ. I, I mean, this Lisa. was this was the original, like, yeah. before Hawkins. this is where Hawkinson stays, is, lies today, but this club was the Vegas club to be at. I, I worked there for years, and I can't tell you the... And I probably saw you. Yeah, yeah. Um, multiple Because you had the aerial axe come fly, down, yeah. which I still think should come back. There's plenty of room in Hawkinson for them to do aerial axe. Yeah. But honestly, I mean, you know, the confetti came down. I think I even entered a Halloween had, costume contest yes, at that, um, yeah. Bo Arts was always yes, there. Yes, yes. Yep. We... I, I was Carol Channing. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. I don't know why. It's... I'm picturing it. I had a blue sequin dress. I had per- pearls. Scott. I had pearls around my neck. Yes, I did. <laughs> and I had a little purse. And I had a little blonde hair. And people did. People had to do. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, no, no. There are no photos because there was no Facebook back then. No, when, do, thank yeah. you. We would have all been in trouble if there was Facebook in I the early times. I had one on my MySpace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I didn't even have MySpace before, but, but yeah, Studio Fifty Four was the quintessential. Like, I mean, it was it was so much fun that made the club so interactive and so it wouldn't have to show up and like sit in a corner or just the dance floor was awesome. Oh, it was a continuous party, and yeah. not only when we got off, it was a continuous party. Like, yeah. I've missed yeah. that family, and that family really was my became my family. And right. oh my gosh, and a lot of that family's still here. So yeah. when you're putting on a lot of the shows, I mean, Jenny choreographs um, Golden Rainbow every yeah. year, yeah. and you and Andy just directed. Things at Golden Rainbow this year at, yeah. at Tropicana. So there's our picture of Golden Super, Rainbow. What? Yeah. It was my first year on that side. This, okay. Um, well, not choreographing. I've choreographed forever ago, yeah. but stepped off and then came back and then got to work on this side and it was really fun. So give you a little history here for uh, Miss Jamie. Jamie <laughs> Jamie crossed paths with House Seats when we did our, uh, would you do Thriller with us too? I didn't. She I, did not. I wish. But she did. She did come in and help us with Amy Winehouse, Back to Black, and she actually choreographed a number that was Back to Black. Oh, yes. With Amy Guess. She's so lucky. Oh, she's fabulous, too. <laughs> um, which, you know, you have done that with us, and we're going to do a number more. As we were talking, we're doing a number more choreo- chore- choreographic sort of shows rather than just singing. Yes. Because as we all know from the VMAs last night, it's all about the dancing. <laughs> it is not about the singing, y'all. But um, dancing wise, I mean, you have done a lot of shows here on the Strip. You have worked with uh, you have worked with Enoch over at uh, Zombie, Zombie Burlesque. Burlesque, which is such a fun show. Oh my gosh! And I, choreography wise, it's so fun to watch. Yes. I mean, it's they're it swinging around like, penises and things in the air, but um, lots of props. In that I show. didn't even see it, and I auditioned for it, and okay. then I was like, I just knew it was Burlesque, and I was like, of course. Yeah. And then I saw it, and I was like, oh my god, I can't wait! It's brilliant. <laughs> We yeah, had Enoch on here, and he, they, you know, the talking about shows and and how well received it is. I mean, they have so many um, trip advisors and and Yelps commenting on that show, being brilliant for what it is. It's perfect. So you were on the team to create that. Yeah, and in that show, I mean, you do everything. So I was literally tap dancing on the pole and doing point. <laughs> I mean, in your career here in Vegas, mm-hmm. you don't usually get to use all your skill set. Mm-hmm. What was left <laughs> of the tapping? When you so you have been a part because a lot of times when we talk to performers on the show, a lot of times there's that element where you know they're always this is great. This is an encore beach club. <laughs> I knew that right mob. away. Yeah, yep. um, been there a lot. Um, <laughs> you have you are sometimes very much behind the scenes of a show. Yes, which I think a lot of people when you inter- we, we've interviewed you know we've interviewed Keith Thompson as a musical director. We've interviewed people who have done um, production management. But on your side, you have literally have put your hand in a lot of shows that people don't know about on the strip. Absolutely. 
Tell me the role of a choreographer and how they bring you in early and then you're part of the audition process for people who are watching who either want to audition or want to know what what to look for, how to prepare for something. Well, I actually have really enjoyed this process. Being yeah. I've auditioned a hundred times. <laughs> it's really cool to be on the side and I can be very informative to my friends or right. whoever I don't know. I love to see new people and you just kind of sit back and I like to be super clear. This is what I'm looking for. And again, it's not always my choice. Right, right, right. <laughs> but it's it's also interesting to see what people talk about after the audition because I have my opinion and then what people see is so interesting. Sometimes these clients, you never know. And I can't wait for my company to be like, you know, it's just because your tattoos right, or whatever it may right. be. You weren't tall enough. You know, they didn't like your hairstyle. Mm-hmm. It's literally the nitpickiest things that right. occur, but it's really fun. And again, I like to turn my auditions into just a super good time. So regardless, right. you're taking away a fun experience and combo, but it's really interesting <laughs> depending on the show. And that's the thing. I've done so many different shows. It really is a variety of what they're looking for. When you So a lot of the shows that you've done, name off a few that we that the viewers might know here, at least in Vegas particularly. I've done La Rev. Yeah. I did uh, yeah. Rick Springfield, any effects. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, 40 Deuce. Okay. Natalie Bay was oh my gosh, one of my that club. all-time it, favorites. So, so now it's called... It was 1923. It was 1923. Still? Yeah, it is 1923. Yeah. We but synthesized. it was Ivan Kane's 40 Deuce. Oh, yes, and I did the tour, oh. and Tavares choreographed Lena... Oh, it was brilliant. Like, that was my, f- I think I became seasoned there. That venue, if you so don't much. know, it's underneath, it's by RMC Food. It's in the tucked away behind the escalators when you're coming down from Mandalay Place. It is one of the rare gems in Vegas of having, because I remember going there a lot. People had booked tables there yes. all the time for parties. And we watched as as the show starts. It's a very awesome underground sort of burlesque. Get your they had singers. sushi and then come on over. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, you know, one of the venues similar to it now, I mean, not really burlesque, is, is Rose Rabbit Lie. Oh, you have Sky Miles venue. over there doing yes. the numbers. Um, and they're, I guess they're, you know, obviously they're going to be converting, excuse me, the venue for um, uh, Absinthe, Absinthe right? closing. They're going to move yep. over and, and fit it for the space. It's a great space. But that particular venue was so much fun to go to. And you didn't know what you were going to expect. And I think you always came. Yeah, you never And knew. it wasn't a serious dress code. So like even a right. lot of performers, <laughs> like, you know, naked. they came in mm-hmm. and yeah. <laughs> you just didn't know what you were going to get. Did girls changed the variety and it was always well, it's a very tight freestyle. dressing room because I've been back there oh it's like God. you're it's not even yeah it's like it's, it's like a minute and then you're out there and then the stage is no no longer than you know the length of this part of the table I mean it's tight I you can the tell piano you and everything so many stories oh I bet you could and you can't I actually couldn't yeah uh-huh. I'm sure <laughs> for the sake of her career here yeah <laughs> we Fun won't talk stuff, though. we won't talk negatively a about lot of pasties certain things. yes Beautiful pasties went into that. But Larev, <laughs> tell me, because I actually worked oh, yeah. on the beginning of that show. Did you do? Did you come in and do a lot of choreography when they started to revamp the show and change it to a lot more dancing in the show? So I think, yeah, I think they originally started with the Dancing with the Stars, which clearly right. they were professional ballroom dancers. Right. And then I got a call and they were looking for, I think, um, right, I don't know how you say regular dancers, but our yeah. style dancers, studio trained, have more, um, the elements are so crazy in that show. So gotcha. maybe we could work where they could throw us in the water more or whatever, where the ballroom, they changed it over. So we were more part of the aquatic side. Sure. And um, That's awesome. it was super crazy. I love the water and I love to swim, but yeah, they were like, do you ballroom? I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, there you go. And then they taught me, thank God. And yeah. it was awesome. That is one of the most beautiful shows in Vegas. Yeah. And I think I only popped my head up once. Like it's amazing. The crazy things that go on underneath yeah. and how scary it is. And I've been on that intense. pool level a lot. Yep. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it was really fun on the side that I was on the PR side because I would just get to go press to the pool level button in the elevator. Oh and yeah, and then just walk around just casually walk around. as the boys ran off stage. It was great in their nude in their nude neoprene. It was fun. It was a fun show. Also, um, they um, what was I just gonna say? Yeah, on the it'll rev. come back. Well, you know, the rev, the rev, the rev went through a lot of transition from Especially the beginning, which, yeah. and a lot more dancing was brought into the show. Yeah. I mean, the you know, there's the very famous scene, the red men in the um, the red sarong sort of thing. It, that show, I mean, if you're if you've never really witnessed how something is created, because we got to actually we watch, have to see it, yep. we watched as a beginning, we watched Franco Dragone create the show from okay. from a dark box in the theater as it was you know becoming creation. The dream. But the process itself is is super cool to see and watch how things come into from from zero to where it is now. I remember they called me and they said, um, "Okay, two questions: Are you claustrophobic and are you afraid of birds?" And I was like, "Excuse me, <laughs> what?" 
I mean, the things you get asked are <laughs> Those insane. Those are awesome. And then when you do get hired, the first thing you do is watch the show, the whole yeah, show underneath. Yeah. If we get attacked by a dove, yeah. if you're not, if you're afraid <laughs> of lift. birds. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, so it, 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 an involvement to where you have come with um, uh, uh, Zombie Burlesque and other shows that have come up now. What is your most recent work that you've worked with? Um, well, now I'm on the creative side, so more so choreographing. Yeah. So I think the first show I choreographed was American Superstars. Okay. I was also in it. Yeah, and there was yeah. a lot of impersonators. And my business partner was in the show at the time. She's okay. the captain. So she's like, I think Jamie should choreograph. And then from there, it's just kind of escalated. And we got to put together a show called Dream Girls. It okay. was super awesome. Yeah. It was actually close to here at where Embassy Suites is now. Okay. It used to be called sure. different. Yeah. Um, and now I'm choreographing for corporate events and currently working on a 90s project gotcha. called Pretty Fly. So I'm more so choreographing right now. The last show I did was Zombie Burlesque. So tell us a little bit about your company because, you know, people want to know exactly what you're talking about when you're saying you're oh, choreographing sure, sure. and you have, you have the opportunity to place a lot of people in productions and place them in uh, uh, corporate events that come to town because there's a lot of those that keep coming up. Oh my gosh. How does so that many. work? And how does your business work? Well, it's really cool. I mean, I have we have our own company, and it's called GirlBossProductions.com. GirlBossProductions.com. Yep. Got Boss it. Babes. Okay. And we're just kind of giving back to the community, providing. We're kind of two young entrepreneurs, yep. and we just love what we do. And so we're passionate, and we want the opportunity to create as who doesn't. Right. So we do a lot of that already, and we just kind of decided to make it a thing. Gotcha. I also, on the side, get hired just as Jamie for choreography all around kind of the world, but a lot of companies in Vegas, um, DVD, you name it, agencies. I'm right. always lucky enough to choreograph for their events. And one day I'm, you know, being a stand in for JLo and then uh -huh. I'm doing oh, wow. something random. Yeah, that got thrown. What was at that me like? like that. So this is her new so show? Caesar's 50th. We just worked oh, okay. on yeah, production, yeah, sure. right? Yeah. And they just called me over, and uh, the director at DVD said, um, you're going to do this. And they, they handed me her mic, Saworski's, like, gorgeous. And yeah. I was like, what, what am I doing? But I just rolled with it. you got to act like you know. And then they're she like, you're going to you're gonna be her, because mm -hmm. she entered at the end of our number. Okay. And wow. then read her speech. And I was like, can I get a scroll through? Like, are you serious? Read this. Okay. So whatever, I'm up there. Yeah. I know the part, because we choreographed it. I walk out, fog, smoke. I'm like, this is what it feels like. Literally, and I went on, and then I was I like, "Welcome, you. 50th anniversary!" And I just had to roll and read the teleprompter. So that's I've always wanted to meet someone All... who stood in for a celebrity, so to speak. Oh well, I don't that's even so I don't awesome. Even think she knew anything, but maybe she saw my video, and then all the all my Came dancer on. friends were like, "You're on camera," and I, they're like, "Don't mess up." I was like, "Don't mess up, yeah, oh, right." God. So that was pretty cool. Have you have you seen that show all through? No, I'm dying. Neither have we. And this I'm will be dying. another plug again yet for us to see <laughs> Caesars. Please send us JLo tickets. Thank you. Yep. We we missed the opening. They somehow missed our name at house seats. I don't know. It's fine. We still haven't seen that show. So we should all go together, right? I'll make sure mm -hmm. I, I let her know. We'll we'll I figure it out. We'll let her know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So so when you watch, I want to ask you this, when you watch shows like VMAs or other award shows where there's dancing involved or other shows in town like Britney or any of the other shows that use heavy choreography in the show, more so choreography, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that came out wrong. We love you, Britney, everyone who does choreography <laughs> and forgets to sing, I love you. Um, when you see these, but when you see these and you see the level of talent on stage, I mean, Beyonce last night had... I don't know how many dancers she had on stage at one one given time. Whoever sponsored that number in the show yesterday on VMAs, it was massive amounts yes. of dancing. How do they put that together in your mind of like when it goes and and what what happens and 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 how they know to play on that stage? I mean, it looks like a huge undertaking when you're doing something like that. I think it all starts from like one little inspiration, and you sit down and you have a meeting, and then honestly, a lot of times things don't happen. And yeah best mistakes turn into something beautiful. So, gotcha. oh, like but you. absolutely, there's like probably six, you know, people working on it and then it all okay. comes together. And kind of that one day it's supposed to all come together is crazy. And right. Probably an all day thing, but hopefully it does. Did you see Beyonce last night? This I saw, is what, yeah. yep, I saw a little bit. She probably went on for about 10 minutes, I would yeah, say. I mean, had I, something I, to say. Yeah, she had something to say. And <laughs> it was quite, I mean, literally, she was moving, she was using every part of the stage at Madison Square Garden and that they so had, probably. I, I can't wait to do that one day. Yeah. There was that <laughs> moment where, I don't know, was that latex? Or if you watched last night, and I'm sorry if you did on some levels, because <laughs> I, I felt like... We were talking about this at the beginning of the show. Rosie and I were talking about this because we felt like we were being dumbed down a little bit with the mm -hmm. way the commentators were talking to us. And 
And, well, there was a lot of lip syncing going on. <laughs> you know, they can't dance and sing at the same time, right? Thank you, Tina Turner and other people who paved the way the for really singing and dancing. 90s. 90s. <laughs> Ladies, come on. There was a moment where I did watch Rihanna move, remove the microphone and there was still singing going on and she magically. Can, and she can sing. Oh, I know she so can. I'm like, I don't know why they do that. There was, we saw Billboard Music Awards, I think it was recently, where she just brought the house down singing and it was only yeah, just her. Yep, yep. And then you have her dancing and it's like she just pulled the mic away and there the track was still going. You're like, okay, that's what's happening now. <laughs> but it was VMAs and it was, it was, you know, it was MTV. I don't know. They don't really show music videos anymore anyway, so I don't really know what. I know I, don't I know miss that. I what their that. channel's about. But, yep. um, but anyway, so that side, I mean, you see the talent coming out there and doing these elaborate numbers and these elaborate dance routines. Is that something you aspire to do, is actually choreograph something that somebody does like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For an artist or just big productions in general, I think I'm training for that. And it's really cool. I love, I think being a dancer, being in the business, being a makeup artist, yeah. being all, you know, flying in the air, it kind of gives me a grip on everything. And so I usually bring that to the table when I come onto a project. So it's cool. So when you're a kid in Phoenix and oh, you're yeah. dreaming about being a dancer and choreographer, mm -hmm. what, what did you envision your life was going to be like? Well, I didn't think Vegas. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just didn't know about Vegas, to be honest, when I was younger, gotcha. which is a good thing, yeah. mom and dad. But um, I do... I wrote, I made this little school report and I was like, I want to be a choreographer. So I used wow. to like sleep in my dance shoes and my mom would drive me all around in every dance competition and the money they put into it. I'm like, oh, very thankful. So I'm like, it paid off. Yeah. But I'm still doing it and I feel super blessed. And yeah, but I dream, I kept saying, I'm going to be a choreographer. I'm busy dancing. I was always very into it. And the universe responded. Yeah, it's very cool. This is, again, I'm going to bring it up because we talk about this every <laughs> single time, and Tanya will attest to this, that literally, what you know, I'm a big firm believer in the in the power of of, of all that. I know, oh, is that what you have on your? Dreams are my reality. Yep. <laughs> so we were talking at top of show, the one thing I would ever get tattooed, because I'm a huge, like, I, if I get my finger pricked for an <laughs> allergy test, I pass out, this would be a problem. I would put pure imagination <gasps> Oh. On my body somewhere because oh I am a Willy Wonka, and so this is why we were talking about. But honestly, you know the the uh, he, there he goes I again playing it. the Willy Wonka themes. It's crazy. It. Um, you know we talk a lot about the law of attraction and putting out in the world what you want Absolutely. and knowing early on what the dream you have for your life is. Yeah. And see, we uh, this is what I put on my Instagram today, and I reminded <laughs> people again, we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of the dreams. This is very important in your life when you really put together what you want in your life because it manifests. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, it comes out in a way. And and so we were talking, I'm going to put you at the end of the show here and talk a little bit about you as a small business because in doing this show, this is like number 34 or 35 of our shows. We've done 35, number 35. Woo! Lucky number 35. Ah! <laughs> we, 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 you know, Scott, and, Scott is very um, adamant about getting me to do another show and we talked about, uh, he sighs, um, I've been my own boss for 11 or 12 years now, and and one of the things that I, is very difficult is being your own boss and being representing yourself and going out there and getting the business. So we're going to start a new show. It's going to air starting at the end of next month, probably the beginning of October. We're going to talk about this. It's real life. Yes. It's called Small Business, Big Voice, because this country's made up of small businesses like ours, like yourself, like small businesses out there, like Keeley as well, like Tanya. Like house seats. And, and so we're going to talk to people about, because it's very difficult. It's very lonely being in business by yourself. Yep. And you don't know who to ask. And we want to have this being like an education process for all of us about what to do. Hire this person. Do that. And 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 talk to people like, well, we're going to try to get on John Maxwell. He's one of my big people. Oh, whoo, she got excited. <laughs> Three things successful people do. And he's one of my favorite people. I read him regularly. That's Yep. It's a, and, and as, as uh, Scott pointed out, it's a pretty thick book for three things to learn, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a quick, it's a quick read. Um, but we're going to talk to a lot of business people and we've, we've gratefully got sponsorships by local, uh, the Finley dealership, uh, of Jaguar slash Land Rover. They are our corporate sponsor for the show. Cool. And so we are going to talk to business people and what makes your business work and the questions you need to ask. So it was going to be an educational process for us because you were out there working it. And you were out there putting yourself out there for people to hire you. And what, what are the things to do? And how do you find, how do you, how do you stay in business for yourself and by yourself? And you're not alone. 
Absolutely. So we're going to talk about this. So okay. we may have you back on talking about how to do that. So yeah. one more time a shot, but this shot is going to be for Gene Wilder today. So Absolutely. cheers to Pure you. Thank you for being there. There we go.